Hello students. Today I am going to give a lecture on simple modules. I will start my lecture with the definition of maximal submodule. Let M be R module. Then a submodule N of M is called maximal if N is not M and the only submodules of M containing N are M and N only. That is. If P is any submodule of M containing N, then P can be N or M. Similarly, we can define a submodule. Similarly, we can define a minimal submodule. A submodule N of module M is called minimal if N is not zero, and the only submodules of M. Contained in N are zero and N. That is, if P is submodule of M contained in N, then P is zero or N. Next, we come to the definition of simple module. A module M is called simple if it is non-zero, and the only submodules of M are zero and N. So an R module M is called simple if, first of all, it should be non-zero and it has only two submodules, namely zero and M. For example, let us take Q, the ring of rational numbers. We know that Q is module over Q, and the submodules of this module will be just the ideals of Q. Now Q being a field. Has only two ideals, namely zero and Q. So, if we consider Q as a module over itself, then it is a simple module. Similarly, Z consider Z the ring of integers. Z is a module over itself, and uh, its submodules will be ideals of Z. Now, there are so many ideals of Z other than zero and Z. So, if we consider Z as a module over itself, then it is not simple module. Now, next are the few trivial observations. First is any minimal submodule of M is simple. So this is very easy to see. Suppose M is a simple R module, and N is minimal submodule of M. Then we want to prove that N is simple. So let P be any submodule of N. Since N is minimal submodule, so P has only two choices, zero and N. Thus, N has only two submodules, zero and N. So N is simple. This is very easy to see. Next is a submodule N of M is maximal if and only if the quotient module M mod N is simple. Let us try to prove this. Suppose N is maximal submodule of M. Now we want to prove that the quotient module m mod n is simple. So to prove this, we need to prove two facts. First, that m mod n is non-zero module, and number two, m mod n has only trivial submodules, namely zero and m mod n. Now we all know that there is one-to-one -one correspondence. Between the submodules of M mod n and the submodules of M containing n, so thus any submodule of M mod n will be of the form K mod n, where K is submodule of M containing n. Now, n is given to be maximal submodule, and K is submodule of M containing n. So K has two choices. K can be M or K can be N. Thus, K mod N will be M mod N or zero. Thus, we have shown that any submodule of M mod N can be zero or M mod N. Hence, M mod N is simple module. Conversely, let us assume that M mod N is simple R module. Now, we want to prove that N is maximal submodule of M. Now, M mod n is given to be simple, so M mod n is non-zero. 
so thus n is not m now let p be any sub module of m containing n so clearly p mod n will be sub module of m mod n but m mod n is given to be simple module so p mod n can be 0 or m mod n so thus p can be n or m thus n is maximal sub module thus we have proved that a sub module n of m is maximal if and only if m mod n is simple module <laughs> next we come to shur's lemma it states that if m and n are simple r modules then any r linear map from m to n is either zero or isomorphism that is any r linear map between two simple r modules will be either a zero map or it will be isomorphism in particular the ring of endomorphisms of m is a division ring so let us try to prove this so first of all we will consider any arbitrary linear map from m to n so we have two choices either it is zero or it is non-zero if f is zero then there is nothing to prove so suppose f is non-zero now if f is a non-zero map from m to n that means there will exist some element x naught in m for which f of x naught is non-zero that is x naught will not belong to kernel of f so kernel of f will be proper sub module of m but m is given to be simple r module so m has only two sub modules namely 0 and m so kernel of f being sub module of m and not equal to m it has only one choice left namely 0 that is kernel of f is 0 so thus f is 1 1 next we consider image of f that is f of m it is clearly sub module of n n is also given to be simple r module so f of m has only two choices n or 0 but f of m is not 0 because f is not 0 map so f of m will be n that is f is on to thus we have shown that if f is a non-zero r linear map from m to n then it is both 1 1 and onto that is it will be isomorphism so thus any non-zero linear map between simple r modules is isomorphism so hence it follows easily that uh, the set of the ring of endomorphisms of a simple r module m is a division ring next we see the difference between simple left r module and simple ring a ring is said to be simple if it is non-zero and it has no non-trivial two-sided ideals but a ring is said to be simple r module if it has no non-trivial left ideals so if a ring is simple then it need not be simple r module for example let us consider D to be a division ring and R to be the set of n by n matrices over D. We know that R has no non-trivial two-sided ideals. So hence R is a simple ring but R has non-trivial left ideals. So it is not simple R module. Next we see some properties of simple R modules. An R module M is simple if and only if it is isomorphic to R mod I for some maximal left ideal I in R. Let us prove this. Suppose M is simple R module. So thus M is non-zero. So we take a non-zero element say X naught in M. Now we consider the sub module generated by x naught in m clearly this sub module is non zero because the element x naught is non zero as m is given to be simple module this sub module has to be equal to m 
So thus, m is equal to the submodule generated by x0. That is, any element of m can be written as a x0, where a is in R. Now, consider a map from R to m given by f of a is equal to a x0, where a is in R. Clearly, f is R linear map because f of a plus b will be a plus b x0 which is equal to a x0 plus b x0 which is equal to f of a plus f of b. Similarly, f of r a will be r a x0 which is r times a x0 which is r f of a. So f is clearly r linear map. Since m is submodule generated by x0, so clearly f is onto. Now let us find kernel f. Kernel f will be the set of those elements a in R such that a x0 is equal to 0, which is equal to annihilator of x0. Thus, by fundamental theorem of homomorphism for modules, we get that m is isomorphic to R mod kernel f. That is R mod annihilator of x0. Since m is given to be simple, so R mod kernel f is also simple. That is, kernel f is maximal submodule of R. That is, kernel f will be maximal left ideal in R. So thus, we have shown that if m is simple, then it is isomorphic to R mod i for some maximal left ideal i in R. Let us now try to prove the converse. Suppose m is isomorphic to R mod i for some maximal left ideal i in R. Since i is maximal left ideal in R, that is i will be maximal submodule in R, so i will not be equal to R. So thus m is non-zero. And next, now we want to prove that m is simple. That is, we want to prove that only submodules of m are 0 and m. Now, the submodules of R mod i will be 0 and R mod i only because i is maximal left ideal. So, thus R mod i is simple and hence m is simple. So, thus we have proved that any simple R module can be seen as quotient of R by some maximal left ideal in R. <laughs> The next result says that the annihilator of any non-zero element of simple module is a maximal left ideal and vice versa. That is, every maximal left ideal is annihilator of some non-zero element of simple module. So let M be simple module and X0 is any non-zero element of M. We will prove that annihilator of X0 is a maximal left ideal. Now, since x0 is a non-zero element of m, so I submodule generated by x0 will be non-zero submodule of m. Since m is simple, so the submodule generated by x0 is equal to m. That is, any element of m can be written as a x0 where a is in R. Now again, we consider a map from R to m defined by f of a is equal to a x0. As before, we can easily prove that f is onto R linear map and kernel of f turns out to be annihilator of x0. So, m is isomorphic to R mod annihilator of x0 and it is maximal left ideal of R. So, thus we have shown that and high later of a non-zero element of simple module is a maximal left ideal. Now let us prove the converse which says that any maximal left ideal of any maximal left ideal of a ring is an highlighter of some non-zero element of simple module. So let M be maximal left ideal of ring R. That is M is maximal submodule of R. So R mod M is simple. 
So let, let us take an element 1 plus m in our mod m and let us name it as x0. Clearly x0 is non-zero because 1 does not belong to m. Now annihilator of x0 will be those elements of r which kill x0. That is those elements a of r such that a 1 plus m is equal to m. That is those a in r such that a belongs to m. So this set will be nothing but r intersection m which is equal to m. Thus we have proved that a maximal left ideal m of r is annihilator of non-zero element of r mod m which is simple module. So this corollary readily follows from this theorem that intersection of annihilators of all elements of simple module is a two-sided ideal of R. So let M be a simple module. Then annihilator of M is equal to intersection of annihilator of X, X in M. And since annihilator of 0 is whole of M, so this intersection can be seen as intersection of non-zero elements X in M, annihilator of X. We know that annihilator of any element of a module is a two-sided ideal of R and intersection of two-sided ideals is again a two-sided ideal. So annihilator of M is a two-sided ideal. Thank you.